Now, before we get to the video, if you're new to the channel, I wanted to let you know that we try to stay up to date on all things 3D printing, from filament and printer reviews to in-depth slicer analysis, as well as a plethora of how-to videos. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can be notified every time we post a new video. Warning, this video contains graphic depictions of 3D printer content. Side effects include but are not limited to obsession, addiction, loss of friends, loss of sleep, and possible divorce. 3D printing can be habit forming and is not recommended for those with lots to do as you will be late and you will miss appointments. Studies have found that most people using 3D printers experience happiness, frustration, and joy at the same time. Buy a 3D printer at your own risk. You could end up sleeping on the couch. Hey guys, Tech Nivers here. This is my Ender 3 Pro. And you know, I bought this beast about a year ago and it was my second 3D printer. It's since become my workhorse and I was so excited about the quality and ease of use that I did a review on it a few weeks later and haven't looked back. Now though, it's been a while, and though I love my Ender 3, I thought it was only fair that I do a full and thorough review now that I'm more intimate with the machine. So here we go, the official Technivorous review of the Ender 3 Pro. My first print on the Ender 3 was the test dog. It comes on the SD card that's included with the machine, it comes pre-sliced and ready to print. First thing I did after assembly was load some Amazon Basics PLA and hit print on that doggy. The print came out amazing and I was overjoyed. While it printed away for about five hours on that puppy, I was happily going about designing and slicing my next model. It wasn't until halfway through my second print that I realized I had a long way to go with my slicer settings to match the quality of Kira's first pre-sliced print. Seeing something come out perfect and then struggling to find the right slicer settings, as every print after that fails spectacularly in one way or another, was extremely disheartening. It didn't take too long, however, to diagnose each problem, make adjustments, and start a new print. And after a few YouTube searches and profile tweaks, it was printing like a dream. Then came time to try some other filaments. Each type of plastic has its own learning curve, but fortunately I'd hammered out most of those problems on other machines. So when it came to the Ender 3, I could take my good base profile and make some minor adjustments and be printing well with anything in no time. I've grown to love this machine. But before I fully endorse it and give you the hard score for this machine, I realize many people watching this are new Ender owners or are just thinking about purchasing it, and for that reason, I wanted to go over some of the issues that you will no doubt experience with this machine at some point. First, let's talk about the specs of the machine and what it can do. Prints on the Ender 3 max out at 220 millimeters deep by 220 millimeters wide and 250 millimeters high. To give you an idea of how big that is, it's slightly too small to print a helmet that fits on an adult, but it'll print one that fits my nine-year-old perfect. This is by far not the largest print volume out there, but it is more than sufficient for most cases. It uses a single nozzle to print with one material and a single color. The nozzle diameter is 0.4 millimeters, but you can purchase different sizes for the machine. It uses a 1.75 millimeter filament, which is pretty standard for a desktop machine and readily available. And the heated bed can be turned up to temps as high as 110 degrees to help the model adhere to the bed and keep it from knocking over during printing. Factory specs say the max print speed is 180 millimeters per second, and that's pretty high. I've achieved decent quality spe at speeds close to this, but most of the time expect to run the machine around half that speed for a higher quality. The Ender 3 prints best at layer heights between 0.1 and 0.4 millimeters, which gives you a good range. 0.1 will take longer but look more detailed with finer, hard to see layer lines, and 0.4 will in comparison look rough with very visible layers, but will print really fast. For most applications with this machine, I find myself printing at 0.2 millimeters. This is a happy medium between print speed and sanding time and gives you a good quality print with minimal finishing work at a decent pace. The Ender 3 has an SD card ready and direct connect USB port for connecting to your PC. It uses an LCD screen and a radial knob control to manage the function of the printer itself. All in all, for the price, this is a very robust machine and I highly recommend it. Sure, there are a couple of caveats, but none of the printers I have tried were perfect, and this one was a perfect fit for me. The Ender 3 Pro is a 5-star machine in my book, so I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5. And if you're looking to buy a printer, I can safely recommend this one for sure. But before you jump right in, I should tell you, I like to tinker. So if you want a machine that you never have to deal with, get something else. However, if you love electronics and are eager and willing to learn every inch of your machine, this is the one. The number of printable mods for this machine alone is astounding and there is a great community of users online who are all happy to help you on your adventure. The following is a list of things you will need to do at this, to this machine at some point if you use it on a regular basis. Firstly, level the bed. You'll have to do this for pretty much any machine so that's not a big deal. As well as the second one which is change a nozzle. The more you use it, the more you'll have to do this. Clearing a clog. Even with good filament, clogs happen, but there is an easy fix and even preventative measures. Tightening screws. Keeping belts and bolts tight keeps the machine in square. Because of vibration while running, occasional tightening is required. 
Now, after a long period of continued use, here's a few things that I have also had to do to the machine. But keep in mind, it's been running for about a year straight. I've had to resolder the bed connection after the bed stopped heating. The wires that are attached to the bed and the main board came loose from the bed. Cleaning the whole lot end after a bad clog. This has happened a couple times, and it's not that big of a deal. Mostly caused by not reseating the nozzle properly. Once you deal with this once or twice, you'll make sure you do it right the next time, and you won't have to deal with this again. Changing the Bowden tube. I recommend upgrading to a Capricorn tube, as I haven't changed it since installing this one, and it's still running great. Rewiring the onboard fan so it's always on. Now, this was something that I had to do in order to turn my part cooling fan off when printing with ABS, or turn it down when printing with PETG. When the machine comes to you stock from the factory, they have the fan for the main board attached to the same place as the fan for the part cooling fan, which means when you turn down the part cooling fan, it turns down the main board fan. This can cause overheating, it can cause your stepper motors to skip, and it can cause other problems as well. So, if you're going to be printing with PETG or ABS, and you're going to be lowering your fan speed, you're also going to want to rewire that, and I do have videos for it on my channel. And that's basically it for any warnings I might have. All in all, this is an amazing machine. Just remember, if you do decide to purchase an Ender 3 or an Ender 3 Pro, I've documented my experience with all of these issues and how to fix them. In fact, there's a video tutorial for all of them here on my channel, and I've put most of them into a single playlist called The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to the Ender 3. So be sure to subscribe to this channel and bookmark that playlist, as it'll save you countless headaches down the road. All in all, this printer is said to be the best bang for the buck, and I'm inclined to agree. It's a great machine for everyone from younger hobbyists to the tech savvy, and the only real warning I should warn you about is that you may become addicted. But don't worry, my friends and I will see you at the 3D Printing Anonymous meetings. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you join the club. I've included some links down below for the Ender 3 and parts for the Ender 3, so if you're thinking of purchasing a printer, please consider using the affiliate links below. They won't cost you anything extra, but by using them, you're helping our channel grow. Thanks, guys.